Hello and welcome to Nature Source Care. My name is Dr. Fonda Goldman. I'm a naturopathic physician as well as a yoga teacher. And in today's talk, I was gonna I was gonna cover Ayurvedic foot reflexology. So let's get into it. A note of caution as always, the information presented here is for educational purposes only and should not be considered medical advice. For any symptoms that are severe or worsening, please contact a qualified healthcare professional. It is always important to determine the root cause of any disease and to develop a comprehensive treatment plan. Individual cases can vary in terms of treatments that are most effective, and solo therapies such as reflexology may not be appropriate or effective in all cases, so please keep that in mind. So, Ayurvedic foot reflexology. So, well, let's talk about Ayurveda a little bit first. Ayurveda is traditional Indian medicine, and it's more than 5,000 years old. And, um, you know, what I appreciate about reflexology is that it's non-invasive. That's always appreciated, I think, by myself as a practitioner and also my patients. Um, it's a kind of energy therapy. There are physical, there's a physical component to it, but it's also an energy therapy. And so besides just literally pressing on the foot and physically manipulating the foot, you're also pressing, uh, pressing on energy points that relate to different organs in the body. So you can think of reflexology as a kind of energy therapy. And it, whenever you're thinking about energy therapy, such as homeopathy or Ayurveda, you kind of have to wrap your mind around the idea that people and diseases and states of health are energies or waves. Okay? So the idea here is that by, by touching these points and massaging the feet potentially, sometimes it's just gentle, just a bare minimum touch that's used. Sometimes it's more like a typical massage that you might um, get at a, a professional massage place. Um, there are different ways of working with these points. Um, but essentially touch is what is used typically to rebalance the energy of these points. There are other systems of reflexology. I can't say that I'm an expert in all of them. Um, uh, you know, this is the one that I refer to most. Um, because again, I'm, I'm really deep into Ayurveda. Um, so I'm not exactly sure how this system compares to other systems of reflexology. If you are an expert of, on it, you know, uh, please comment below and let me know if they're similar or different or what have you. Um, and the reason, part of the reason why I'm doing this talk is that I recently did a talk on marma therapy. Um, marma therapy is like acupressure, but it's again from the Ayurvedic perspective rather than traditional Chinese medicine perspective. I have a whole playlist. I've gone through all the points. There's 117 points in the body, uh, marma points, and I've gone through all of them. So if you're interested in that, I have a whole playlist of marma therapy. The last video I did on the points, I finished with the points on the feet and the ankles. So if somebody's working on the feet and the ankles, I thought this would be nice to have this information as well. So you might kind of, you know, uh, get double, <laughs> you know, d double, double up on the benefits potentially, depending on how you're working with the feet. All right. And if you're generally interested in this sort of content, you might check out my Marma Therapy, Ayurveda, and Body Care playlist because I always organize my videos in the playlist so that they're easy to find. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the benefits of reflexology. Um, these are major ones. So benefits, typically people feel very relaxed when they get um, reflexology done, if it's done gently. Um, and again, you can rebalance organ, different energies of different organs in the body because there are these sort of, some people think of them as reflex points. And again, other people think of them as just energy points. You can increase energy and vitality, increase circulation, you can decrease pain, um, different sorts of pain like menstrual pain, headaches, that sort of thing. Um, you can improve mental clarity and you can eliminate toxins um, through reflexology. Contraindication, so this may not be appropriate if you have any broken bones um, in the feet, um, open wounds in the feet, recent surgery on the feet, infectious disease on the feet. Um, you know, again, this can be helpful, like if you did break a bone or some broke a toe or something like that, once you got cleared by your doctor, um, you know, after the bone has been set, maybe six to eight weeks out, you could do something like this. Um, but as always, when in doubt, consult with your doctor first before attempting this, this or any other therapy. 
So let's talk about the ball of the foot first. We're basically going to be mapping the foot. So in this diagram here, you the diagrams that I have here, you want to think of them as like as if you were if somebody was laying down in front of you, their toes are pointing to the sky, and you're looking at the bottom of their feet. Okay, um, and their face is up and their toes are up. Okay, so if their feet are flexed um, and kind of right at you, you know, pointing at you, then this diagram here is going to be the bottom of somebody's left foot and the ball and the ball of foot and the toes of their left foot. Okay, so it's going to, it might be a little bit confusing. This is not, you know, again, you looking down at your own foot. This is you looking at the bottom of somebody else's foot. Okay, which again would be their left foot. So, you know, that part about a reflexology can be a little bit confusing. The other thing is that in reflexology, at least Ayurvedic reflexology, there are different points on the right foot versus left foot that correspond with right, right body and left body anatomy. Okay, so let's get through it for, let's start with the points here. So, sort of where under the foot, on the bottom of the foot, but where the nail would be on the big toe, that point is related to the brain. So on the left foot, that's going to be related to the left brain. On the right foot, it's going to be related to the right brain. So at the base of that big toe, that's the point where you would potentially be stimulating the thyroid. And again, the right thyroid on the right foot, a thyroid on the left foot. So for example, if you had nodes or something like that, and you know happen to know that they're on the right or the left side of your thyroid, this might be a, a nice uh, adjunct, adjunct therapy to what you're uh, doing. So just in addition to other therapies, I wouldn't do this by itself. I would do other therapies as well, but this could be helpful, supplemental. Um, under the second and third toes, kind of at the base there, that's where you're working with um, on points related to the eyes. So on the right foot, the right eye. On the left foot, the left eye. And then on the fourth and fifth toe, you're working on ears. So right ear, right foot, left ear, left foot. Then if you move down, so this is kind of more, those are sort of the big toe and base of the toes. Now if you move down a bit and you're on the ball of the toe, so if you're standing, not tippy toe like a ballerina, but if you're kind of um, lift your heels up, this is where you'd be standing on your foot, typically. So on the inner part of the foot, and again we're at the we're looking at the bottom of somebody somebody else's left foot, um, right kind of below the big toe where there, you can kind of feel that bony prominence, that's where you're going to be working on the heart. So on the right foot, there, we're going to be working on the right chambers of the heart, and on the left foot, you're going to be working on the left chambers of the heart. Okay. Now most most of that, if you continue in that line. Most of that space under the second, third, fourth toe, um, this is going to be the lungs. So on the right foot, the right lung, on the left foot, the left lung. And then in the corner there, again in this line, um, you're going to be working on shoulders. So on the right shoulder, right foot, left shoulder, left foot. Okay. Then you're going to have this kind of um, partition, if you will. You can see this curved purple line here. That's the diaphragm. So if there are any issues with the diaphragm, like maybe you have a hiatal hernia or something like that, and your stomach slips through the diaphragm and comes up and causes issues for you, um, that's the diaphragm. So again, it sort of partitions off the top of this, the top part of the foot, the ball and the toes from the rest of the foot, which we'll get into on the next slide. The other thing is that on the inside part of the foot, but basically from the base of the big toe all the way down, those are, um, that's the spine. So the cervical spine is going to be right there at the um, base of the toe, big toe. And then you're going to have the thoracic spine and then you're going to have the lumbar spine. <laughs> yeah, so it's basically like you, you can kind of imagine the spine run, running from cervical down to coccyx as you follow from the base of big toe all the way down to the heel. Okay, so that's the top part of the foot. Then if we look at the lower parts of it, so again, we're looking at the bottom of somebody else's left foot as if they were lying down, their nose and their toes both are pointing up to the sky. Then you can see again, this partition here, the purple line, that's the diaphragm. 
and then this pink line running down the inside of the foot this is a, this is the spine and again the top of this line is the top of the spine so that's going to be the cervical spine then the thoracic spine and then the lumbar spine working all the way down to the coccyx here okay. um, so the same thing here there's going to there are going to be slightly different organs but, um, on the right foot versus the left foot, but they correspond with where they naturally live and lie in the, on the right side of the body, the left side of the body. So if we look at this first patch here in the middle, um, sort of red patch, I have stomach written over it, and that would be true if this is the left foot. Um, but if it's the right foot, that's actually going to be the duodenum, so the beginning of the small intestine. Okay. Then if we move over towards the outside in that same line, you see that big uh, kind of aqua blue patch. That's going to be the spleen, again, if this is the left foot. But the corresponding organs on the right side of the body are the liver and the gallbladder. So if this is, you know, if we flip this, if we do a mirror image here, and this becomes somebody's right foot, the bottom of somebody's right foot, then instead of being the spleen, you're looking at the liver and gallbladder points. Got it? Okay. Then below the stomach, we have the pancreas. And again, on the right foot, that's going to be the head of the pancreas, where it normally lies on the right side of the body. And then the tail of the pancreas is going to be on the left foot. Then if you move over a little bit on the outside um, part of the foot, on the right foot, you're going to be dealing with the right kidney. And on the left foot, you're going to be dealing with the left kidney. Move down a little bit. We've got a bladder point here. And you can, and I didn't write here right and left, but um, usually the bladder, sometimes you know if there's a right or a left issue, but usually the bladder we deal, you know, as, as an entire organ. Then below the bladder, there's, I, I just wrote here, this little black spot here, <laughs> I wrote sex. Those are basically sex organs. So for the men, it's gonna be the prostate, and for women, it's gonna be the cervix. So if there are issues there, or like women, if they're having menstrual issues, you know, like PMS, that sort of thing, this might be a good point to work with. Um, on the outside, you see this kind of long, navy, dark blue um, rectangle, and I wrote colon over it. So on the right foot, that's that space on the foot is gonna be related to the ascending colon, which is on the right side of the body, and on the left foot, it's gonna be related to the descending colon. Okay. And then right in the center of the heel there, you see this sort of orange-brown spot. That's actually helpful for the sciatic nerve. So on the right foot, the right sciatic nerve, and on the left foot, the left sciatic nerve. Okay, so again, uh, just mapping out different spots on the foot so that you can um, you know, work with them and maybe incorporate them if you're doing some sort of marma therapy on your feet, that sort of thing. The other thing to know, again, we're talking about Ayurveda here, so traditional Indian medicine, there are also the different chakras related to different parts of the foot. So um, if we go through chakras one, two, three, four, five, and six, six to seven, and their names are here, Muladhara, Svadhisthana, Manipura, Anahata, Vishuddha, Ajna, and Sarasrara, Sahasrara, sorry. Um, so you start at the heel, that's going to be chakra number one. You move up a bit in this orange circle, that's going to be chakra number two. Right in the center here is a chakra number three, or what correlates to chakra number three, or Manipura chakra. Then if you move up into, the again, the ball of the foot underneath the big toe, um, that's going to be the Anahata or heart chakra. Right below that big toe, kind of like the base of the big toe, that's chakra number five, Vishuddha. The, the, now you're on the big toe for chakra number six, um, kind of like the base of the nail, that, that region. Um, that's gonna be Ajna or the Ajna chakra or the third eye point. And then the very tip of the toe um, is gonna be the crown chakra, seventh chakra. Okay. So there you go, uh, a little bit more information about your feet in case you're doing some work on them or somebody else is. Um, as always, I appreciate your time and I appreciate your interest in learning generally. 
um, if you're interested and uh, I also have another YouTube channel on Vedic Astrology so if you're interested in that you can look that up it's called Heartlight Vedic Astrology because um, obviously I'm very interested in the Vedic arts generally um, but as always I hope you found this interesting helpful and until the next one take care